diversification. I can almost guarantee if you go to any college and take a finance class, one of the first real lessons you learn as a trader is to diversify. Buy a bunch of different companies, that way if one decides to fall, it doesn't hurt your portfolio as much, as the other companies can cancel out the damage. But some of the top investors like Charlie Munger, Mark Cuban, and Warren Buffett think otherwise. The idea of diversification makes sense to a point. If you don't know what you're doing and you want the standard result and not be embarrassed, well, of course, you can widely diversify. Now, you, nobody's entitled to a lot of money for recognizing that because it's a truism. It's like knowing that two and two equals four. But the investment professionals think they're helping you by arranging a dir dir diversification. An idiot could diversify a portfolio and, or a computer for that matter. But the whole trick of the game is have, have a few times when you know that something is better than average and invest only where you have that extra knowledge. And then if you get just a few opportunities, that's enough. And what the hell does you care? You own three securities and J.P. Morgan Chase owns 100. You know, it's, what's wrong with owning a few securities? I mean, it makes sense. If we take a look at some of the biggest and most successful business owners in the world, which is almost kind of like looking at some of the most successful stock owners in a way, almost all of these people on the top Forbes list, they got there by creating one successful company. Maybe some of them made two, maybe some of them made three, but almost none, if any, got here by creating 50 different companies. Whenever you have 10, 20, 30, 100 different stocks in your portfolio, that's an extremely big amount of information to keep track of. The ability to concentrate on just a few investments is an enormously valuable asset. If you want to make high rates of return, it's extremely hard to do that with a massively diversified portfolio. But uh, so we have no, there's nothing magic. We like to put a lot of money in things that, uh, that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, we think diversification is as practiced generally makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably, uh, because there aren't that many wonderful businesses at, that are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood and it and to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as, as madness and it, it, it's conventional practice and it you know if all you have to achieve is, is average uh, it uh, may preserve your job but it's, it's a confession, in our view, that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. You know, I base, I mean, as on a personal portfolio basis, you know, I own one stock, you know, it, but it's a business I know, it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. Uh, so, you know, do I, do I need to own 28 stocks in order to, you know, have proper diversification, you know, and uh, be nonsense. And within Berkshire, I could pick out three of our businesses, and I would, I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned and I had all my money in Berkshire. Now, I love it, the fact that we can find more than that and that we keep adding to it. Three of those will be better than 100 average businesses. At, uh, uh, and, and they'll be safer, incidentally. I mean, they, there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there, than there is in owning 50 well-known big businesses. And uh, it's amazing what has been taught over the years in finance classes about that, but uh, I would rather pick, if, if I had to bet the next 30 years on the fortunes of, uh, of my family that would be dependent upon the income from a given group of businesses, I would rather pick three businesses from those we own than own a diversified group of 50. Charlie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what he's saying is that much of what is taught in modern corporate finance courses is twaddle. Do you want to elaborate on that, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> 
You cannot believe this stuff. I uh, mean, modern portfolio theory and uh, yeah, it's it's. It has no utility. I mean, it, it, it you know it will tell you how to do average, but you know I I I, I think uh, anybody can figure out how to do average in fifth grade. I mean, it, it's just not that difficult, and uh, it's it's elaborate, and you know there's lots of little Greek letters and all kinds of things to make you feel that you're in the big leagues, but it. Uh, there is no value added. <laughs> I have great difficulty with it because I am something of a student of dementia, and I have. <laughs> yeah, we hang around a lot together. And I can ordinarily <laughs> classify dementia, you know, on some uh, theory structure of models. But the modern portfolio theory, uh, it involves a type of dementia I just can't even classify. No. Something very strange is going on. <laughs> If you, find, if you find three wonderful businesses in your life, you'll get very rich. Bad things aren't going to happen to that, those three. I mean, that, that's the characteristic of it. it uh... By the way, maybe that's the reason there's so much dementia. If you believe what Warren said, you could teach the whole course in about a week. Yeah. <laughs> the main thing I learned from this clip is if you are diversifying, it's basically a confession that you don't really understand the businesses you own. And I really like the point that Warren Buffett made about just needing a few successful companies in your lifetime. To get rich, you really just need around three successful companies. It doesn't take much. The thing is, these golden egg type companies are extremely hard to come by. They aren't popping up all the time. There's not hundreds of them out there to pick from. They are pretty rare. There's not hundreds of Coca-Colas. There's not hundreds of apples. There's only a select few. The main argument for diversification is if you put all of your eggs in one basket and the company fails, you're basically screwed. And that type of thinking is valid. But if you're truly investing into one of the golden egg investments, that company will never fail like that. And if it does fail like that, you didn't pick a golden egg investment. It doesn't matter what the market is doing. It doesn't matter if the economy is bad. It doesn't matter if interest rates are rising. If this company is truly one of the good companies, it has such a big competitive advantage that it'll always persevere. And that's why they are so powerful. If you knew that you found one of these golden egg companies, why would you waste your money throwing your capital into other ones? And so what are you investing in? What are the areas that well, you what I did, feel you know? What I did when I, in 2008, 2009, I put everything into MLPs and M rates though. Um, um, mortgage-backed securities, ones that I thought were the better companies, um, and I just piled in. And I also piled into Australian bonds because I thought the economy was good next to China. It was my way of playing China. So you and, make one-way bets. This isn't portfolio balancing you're talking no, about. No, you know, all that asset management, you know, diversification, that's for idiots, right? Because you, because you, can't, you can't diversify enough to know what you're doing. Right. I mean, I did my homework on Australia. Right. I did my homework on the Emrys. I did my homework on MLPs and their pricing had just gotten crushed. And, and so what are you doing right now? So what, I'm, what I did right now, I'd, I'd been going all the dividends and everything I'd be, I put, just put into cash. And so I don't think stocks have fallen enough to just dot, to say these partic any particular stocks are cheap. Right. So when I looked at the MLPs in 2008 and 9, they were paying 18, 19 percent for companies that had never missed a, a payment. Right. It always put out all their cash and they looked dirt cheap. Now, you know, you look at good companies. Apple hasn't fallen that much. And just to be down 10, 15 percent from their highs, they're still not as low as they were 18 months ago. And so what I did was I said, self, self, there's going to be a lot of volatility. So I bought, um, put, took a little bit of money and bought out of the money calls on the, uh, on the um, spider calls I bought on the S um, standards and pours, the SP 500. And then I did the same thing on the diamonds, which is the Dow Jones. So I bought those long when I, when the stock prices cratered. And then when we had the big, not today, but the big run up before I bought a bunch of puts knowing that even though I was paying for a lot of vol volatility, that I thought there would be a lot of swings in the market. And so I so just- So you're just betting on volatility. I'm just betting on volatility. Now look, I need to be extremely clear. This strategy is not for everyone. It can really only work for the 10% of people that know what they're doing. This type of trading is gonna have real bumpy returns. You're gonna have big green days and you're gonna have big red days. You also may not be the type of person to pick out companies like this, or you may not have enough knowledge about the stock market or valuing companies. That's perfectly all right. In that scenario, you should be diversifying. You should be investing in index funds. You should be investing in a bunch of different stocks to reduce risk. 
risk, and that's perfectly okay. Keep trading like that. But if you know what you're doing, and you know the market you're trading in, and you know the company you're looking at has a huge advantage over competition, there's absolutely no reason to diversify, because you're basically throwing money in the trash at that point. In the end, the moral of the story isn't about diversification. It's about knowing a business deeply enough and being extremely confident about its outcomes. If you enjoyed this video or got any type of value from it, leave a like as it really helps my channel grow and it'll keep me motivated to keep posting videos like this. If you want to see how to invest during a high time of inflation, high interest rates, and a falling market like we're currently in, watch this video, where we listen to Warren Buffett's advice to trading in a hard market like the one we are in in the start of 2022. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.